I'm Neil Lion Lime, and this is an introduction to the Getting Over It Glitchless Percent category. I just want to preface that this video won't be talking about the Getting Over It category extensions, or the Snake Percent category. It's solely for the category you have to finish this game as fast as possible without using any mods or glitches. I split this video up into timestamps corresponding to the different segments of this video, so feel free to use them. But without further ado, let's get this video started. So first of all, let's go over the rules for this category. Yeah, even games have rules. So heading over to speedrun.com, you search getting over it, top result, and then go all the way up to the top, click on the view rules button, and you should be there. So here's the first one. Time will begin upon completion of the loading screen after starting a new game or upon pressing control R. Pretty simple stuff. The game's inbuilt timer starts off the boot up as well, so any timer you might be using, whether it be a manual one or an auto splur, should also start at the same time. But I'll talk about the timers in a bit though. The in-game timer will be used, with the completion time determined by the end game screen. Yeah, so if you're using a timer, the times may differ between the in-game one and your one, so you should always go with what your game says on the end screen if you're unsure of what time you got. Restarting the timer by jumping into the water at the beginning, or any other method to restart the timer such as passing 100 hours, are not allowed. Yeah, so when you press Ctrl R or select new game, there's a little wait time where it starts the animation of Diogenes getting out of the pot, exactly 6 seconds if you didn't know. But when you jump into the water and respawn, you actually skip this animation. This without a doubt would be considered cheating, due to you actually getting a 6 second head start. Runs must be completed without pauses or quit outs. Pausing on the iOS version is allowed only when skipping the credits. So on the iOS version of the game, you have to pause after the credits so you can actually beat the game. So this is why this rule has an exception. But if you're using the PC version, there's no need to pause because it might actually be seen as shady. Because you can always splice a run. I demonstrated this by stopping in the exact same spot, then pausing, carrying on the run, then doing it again with another run. Finally, splicing them together, and of course, it's almost seamless due to there not being any music in the background. No gameplay should be obstructed. In parentheses, the cauldron, character, and any walls and objects the hammer may be interacting with. So, for example, if my live split was like this, the run would definitely get rejected. You can display a timer on screen, but as the rule suggests, if it's covering the game so much that it's actually obstructing the character and the surroundings, then your run will almost certainly get rejected. Modding the game in any way is not allowed. This is the only rule of a grey area, and should be updated as soon as possible. So for clarification, you can add mods that don't affect the game. This can include a built-in timer, or Android 2's mod pack. But if you did install Android 2's mod pack, but didn't use any of the mods, that's okay too. But if you did download a mod that somehow made you faster, or made the animation at the beginning end quicker, or anything like that, chances are you would get caught almost 100% of the time. It's pretty hard to miss, and for such a short game, I think people can probably notice if you're doing something a little bit shady. But if you are unsure about this rule, then just don't download any mods. Simple as that. The following minimum video standards must be met. Okay, so now we're onto the videos themselves. I'm going to go into more depth about this later on, but for now let's just whiz through them really quickly. Video source is from either a capture card or a capturing software, OBS, XSplit, Actions, etc. As it suggests, you can use any sort of recording software. The only requirement is that it can actually record video and audio. Video resolution is at least 360p, and frame rate is at least 25 frames with no excessive stuttering or frame drops at any point. End screen is shown long enough to tell what the final time is, the video is not too dark or too bright to show the run clearly. So let's go through a few examples. If I was recording at 144p and my video was 30 frames a second, my run wouldn't get verified. This is because my resolution was too low. If my run was 720p, above the resolution, but the frame rate was 12 frames a second, it wouldn't get verified. This is due to the frame rate being so low that there's a chance that you could probably even splice together a run. 
If my video is 1080p, 60 frames a second, well above what they're asking for, but I cut the video right before the game finished showing the end screen, my run also wouldn't get verified. If I was recording at 1080p, 60 frames a second, and I showed the end screen, but for some reason my clip looks like burnt toast, <laughs> it also wouldn't get verified. If you ever feel scared about this rule, include a little snippet of before and after your run, and remember to set your resolution above the minimum requirement. If your run is somehow underexposed in any way, just check the filter options on your recording software. If you do have some weird filter there, just delete it and the clip should look alright. And with that, you should be done. If you followed these rules correctly, I see no reason why your run shouldn't get verified. Next, I'll be talking about the two Discord servers that Getting Over It has. On the left of speedrun.com, there should be a button labelled Discord. Click on that and then it should boot up the link for you. But you can of course follow the link in the description. This is the unofficial Discord, which has the bulk of the speedrun community on it. If you want the official Discord, links down below as well. But if you want to get the official Discord link the cool way, read the description. It has got spoilers, so if you haven't beaten the game for whatever reason, try to avoid seeing it when you're reading. I'll put it at the bottom so you don't accidentally see it. The two Discord servers for getting over it will be the main places where you'll be spending your time, so I definitely recommend getting used to chatting there. If you want some tips from someone who's spent the last few months on the Discord, try sparking up a conversation about the various tips and tricks in the game. Most people love to share what they do, so this is a great way to get familiar with talking to people. Another tip is to always keep an open mind. Even if you're terrible at the game, remember not to let that bog you down. We're all climbing up the same mountain, and the only way to improve is by going up. Okay, now let's talk about uploading a run to the website. Next, the view rules should be a bubble labelled Submit Runs. You're going to want to click on that. After that, it should be relatively straightforward. Input your end screen time in the in-game time section. Like mentioned earlier, you're always going to want to go over what your end screen says and serve your timer. But by far the most important step is to include a URL link of your run. The platform of course doesn't matter, but the two main ones are Twitch links and YouTube URLs. Try to have the video set as either unlisted or public, because if the video is private, the moderators can't see your video, thus can't verify it. Add a personalised description, pointing out possible mistakes or areas to improve. Then click submit. It usually takes you only a few days for your run to get submitted, but if there's any problems, messaging one of the moderators will actually resolve this pretty quickly. Again, I'll be going into more depth about the video process later on, so skip to here if you're having any problems with recording or uploading your runs. And that just about ends everything you'll need to know surrounding speedrun.com. It's an amazing platform and I totally recommend you uploading some of your runs there. And it's also quite fun to see where you are on the leaderboard as well. The most important ingredient for any speedrun is of course the timer. The timer of choice doesn't really matter, but I recommend LiveSlit because it has built in auto splitter capabilities. This is great for getting over it because the splits usually only happen a few seconds after each other, and of course this is way too quick and would distract you away from your runs, so an auto splitter would really help. Kodium also made a video about this topic, so if you're interested you can watch his video here. But on the other hand, SmallAnt1 made a really good video about the entirety of Live Split and what everything means, like the icons, colours and all that, so I definitely recommend watching that tutorial as well. To download the program, first you need to search Live Split into Google and click on the first link. On the top bar next to Live Split, you're going to want to click on Downloads, then install the latest version. At the point of recording this, it should be 1.7.7, but later updates will of course change this factor. Unzip the file in any way, I personally use 7-zip because honestly, who even uses WinZip anymore? <laughs> Once you have LiveSplit installed, you're going to want to go back onto speedrun.com. Click on the resources page, then click on the scriptable auto split at the top. It should automatically download if everything went ok. You can of course download it through the link in the description as well. When that finishes downloading, put it somewhere on your computer where it won't get lost. Preferably within the live split folder itself, just so you can keep everything organised. The next step is to download the splits themselves. You may or may not have already seen these on a few runs of getting over it. 
They basically split up the game into 10 individual parts, almost like levels of a different video game like Mario. But unlike Mario, this game has no levels, so we had to make up our own names and areas to split up the game. Some examples of these splits are as follows. Between the start where you spawn and the tip of this rock is called Tutorial, solely for the reason that a lot of players learn the bulk of the controls here, you guessed it, like a tutorial. Between the end of Tutorial and the top of the chimney near construction site is called Devil's Chimney. Oh, and here's one that you'll probably know. Between the table with the orange to the top of the church is called Orange Hell. I'll hopefully be going through all these segments of the game in another video, but this will take a long time however, so hopefully by the time this video comes out I'm either halfway through it or I'm done, because that's the power of watching this video in the future. To download these splits, you're going to want to search Getting Over It followed by Splits in the search bar. Like before, click on the first link, then you should end up on a page like this. Click on Export, Local Timers, then select Live Split, and it should download the file straight out of your browser. Like before, I recommend putting this file somewhere where it won't get lost, like in the Live Split folder somewhere. Unlike most files, you can actually boot up Live Split out of the file itself, so if you click on the .lss file, it should boot up with all the splits fully working. If you wanted to stop here and set up all your hotkeys for manual inputs, then you totally can, but I recommend going the full way and getting the auto split working. Right click on Live Split, then click Edit Layout. To add the auto split itself, click on the plus button to add the layout, go down to Control, then Scriptable Auto Splitter. It should add to your settings if everything went smoothly. Then finally, to select the script, click on the layout settings, go to Scriptable Auto Splitter, then find the file that you downloaded into the Live Split folder. As far as I can tell, I think it only takes ASL files, so if you've got the right folder, you shouldn't get too mixed up. And that should be it. You now have a fully functioning auto splitter working without any inputs required. This is super useful for when you want to time how good you did for each section of the game, and should display how good you're doing for the run as a whole. But as I said earlier, SmallAmp1 made a really good in-depth video about all the small intricacies of the program, so I definitely recommend watching it if you fully want to customise your layout. So now we're on to the inbuilt timer. Getting over it straight out of Steam doesn't support any mods by the workshop, so we're going to have to mod the files themselves. Go back onto the unofficial Discord and check by the pinned post. At the top should be Andrew2's mod pack from late 2019. Clicking on the first link should be up the browser for download. Below the post are all the hotkeys for different parts of this mod, so if you ever forget any hotkeys like how to bring up the menu, check back on here and you should find it somewhere. But before delving into this mod, let me first explain what we're about to do. Inside the Getting Over It folder, you can find it by clicking Properties, then browsing by local files, is another folder containing all the .dll files. These are the main building blocks of Getting Over It, so any changes to these will affect the game in some way. But the main one we'll be focusing on will be the assembly-csharp file. Every mod you'll download will need to replace this file, so of course you're going to want to back this up somewhere. I recommend within the Getting Over It folder itself. Make a new folder and label it Backup. Then make another folder inside of that, calling it something like Original C Sharp. Then click Enter. Copy your Original C Sharp file into that folder, and now you're certain that if anything goes wrong, like the game doesn't want to boot up anymore, you can always copy that original file back into the folder. And while you're at it, I'd recommend backing up the entirety of the Getting Over It folder as well. You can never be too safe when dealing with changing the game files. Just a quick side note. Andro 2's mod pack replaces quite a few more files than just the assembly c sharp file, so when we go to replace the files to change the game, you should instead drop it into the main directory. This is so that all the files get replaced with the new ones. And that's why you should back up the whole getting over it folder, because if not, you need to reinstall the game again if something went wrong. For any other mods that just include the assembly c sharp file, all you need to do is copy it into the manage folder and you should be done. But I'll just quickly go through what to do for Andrew 2's mod pack as well. Copy the mod into the backup folder, label it something like Andrew 2's mod pack, then click enter. This is so that whenever you replace it with another mod, you don't need to reinstall it. Copy it into the main directory, replace the files, then you should be done. If everything went okay, you should see the files highlighted to indicate that something has overwritten it. Now upon opening up the game, it should look slightly different. It should now display Andrew 2's mod pack in the bottom right. You'll find that it's updated very frequently, so any bugs that may be found will hopefully get resolved. But once you have Andro 2's mod installed and everything's up to date, boot up a new game and all you need to do is press T, and the timer should show up in the top right. 
It isn't like Live Split where it shows each segment of the game, but it does give you an idea of how good or bad you might be doing on a run. And that's mostly it for the timers. Codium also made a timer mod for this game, so I recommend checking that out as well. I'll link all the mods that people like to use in the description if you're interested as well. It's quite fun to mess around with some of them, but just remember that if there's any mod you might want to download, it might already be included in Anjo 2's mod pack. Think of it like a big compilation of all the best mods made by the community, so in that way it's very convenient. Just a quick tip for the timers before I end this segment. Remember not to get too distracted. Only look at the time when you're mid-air or know by muscle memory what you're about to do in a certain area. There's nothing worse than if you're on a good pace, but then you suddenly look at your timer, see how good you're doing, then fall because you got anxious. Keep your eye on the centre and try not to look up in the corners of your screen. And with that out the way, let's talk about the video process. So as promised, I'll be going through the full recording, editing and uploading process for each run. Uh, just a quick editor's note here, this part of the video isn't as scripted as the rest of the video, so if I wasn't thorough enough or I didn't expand on as many points as you'd like, follow the links down below. I've linked to a ton of tutorials on the same subject by people who are way more qualified than I am. So hopefully that'll fix any problem you might encounter along the way. Oh, and here's the timestamps if you want to skip to any specific part. Okay, now back to the video. So let's talk about the settings for recording. Okay, so for this example I'll be using OBS. It's my personal favourite recording software and it's actually free so if you want to download it, link is in the description. Okay, so when you open it up, after the loading screen, you're going to want to have a look at these audio options here. Specifically in the desktop audio. If you look into properties, you're going to want to set it to default. This is just so if your audio software ever changed or your computer connects to a different monitor, it will always stay the same. Default just sets it to default, whatever your computer may be set as at the moment. So for the microphone, you're going to want to mute it. I personally prefer to recording softwares like Audacity rather than recording it straight into OBS. This is so I can actually edit my clips and my audio separately. I usually just match my audio and microphone together by doing three, two, one, and obviously keying it together. But if you do have your microphone, you obviously need to set to full volume and also set the properties to default as well. I have it usually set to my microphone just so it never changes. But for this example, I'm gonna have it muted. Now on the left here, you're going to want to add the scene getting over it. Click enter and add another thing game capture. You could call this also getting over it if you wanted to but as you can see the name is already in use so I just usually like to name it one. Now you're going to want to set this to capture specific window. The window isn't up yet at the moment because we haven't boosted getting over it, but in a second we're going to choose one like one of these. I'm going to untick capture cursor just so the video looks a bit nicer and it hasn't got a cursor hovering about during the beginning and after. But getting over it does actually remove the cursor, so if you want to show it at the end screen or at the beginning, you can actually leave this ticked. But for me, I actually like to leave it unticked. Click OK and go over to the settings. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. So for resolution, you're going to want to set it to your monitor and for frame rate, you're going to probably have to set it to like somewhere around 60. You can set it to 30 if you want, but it looks a little bit choppy. So I actually prefer to have the video at 60. Now, this is where you can actually watch a tutorial rather than copying what my settings are. But if you do want to copy them and you like the way my videos do look, you can obviously just copy them here. The only thing that I will say is that when you're the recording path should be set to somewhere other than just on your computer. If you have any other drive like this that actually records to it faster, I actually recommend that. Solely for the reason that actually your game might become a little bit choppy because it's actually trying to record the game and put it onto the same computer as your game all going on the same time. So try and split these things up. Try and make a new folder, called it getting over it. Click enter and select folder. 
This means that now every time you record something or do anything like screenshots or anything, it will go to that folder. The same with the audio. I did recommend watching uh, a tutorial on your audio because it obviously differs per computer. Now, this is the really interesting bit here. This is called Enable Replay Buffer. So, a bit like Shadow Play, you can actually record the previous few seconds. I've got set to 200 seconds here, but I give you a little calculation to do for when you're recording your videos for getting over it. So, let's say that your personal best is 2 minutes and 45 seconds. I like to include the beginning and after the run just to give a little bit more authentication. So I add 5 seconds plus another 5 seconds and that tops up the 2 minutes and 45 to now 2 minutes and 55 seconds. As you can see, this display is displaying in seconds rather than minutes. So we're going to need to convert that 2 minutes and 55 to seconds. So 60 plus 60 plus 55 gives you 175 seconds. Type that in here. And as you can see, my storage will now come up to 423 megabytes, nearly half of a gigabyte. This is quite a lot for a single video, solely for the reason that my bitrate is very high. If your bitrate was lower, like say it was a, a thousand, click apply, it would go down drastically. So now it's gone down from 400, nearly half a gigabyte, to now just 27 megabytes. But the video didn't look nearly as nice when you don't have the bitrate really high. So I actually recommend going for that higher option and just don't record so many videos. This is so you can keep on top of your storage. Okay, so the actual replay buffer itself needs to work with a hotkey as it shows here. So let's go to the hotkey sections and set some things. So in the hotkey section, I usually set the save replay button as number three. This is just so it's away from control R and there's no way of you accidentally pressing it while playing getting over it. But of course you need to actually start the replay buffer. I set these as 1 and 2 respectively. This is my preferred setup, but there is a chance that you might forget about these uh, replay buffers while playing the game. If that's the case, you can obviously go with the original uh, intended way of you doing it by pressing the start recording and stop recording. I put these as 4 and 5. This is so I can remember these as well. Now, once you've got all your settings done, you're going to want to open up your Steam, wait for the loading time, select getting over it, and boot it up. By default, it should be in full screen mode like this. I actually prefer to have it in uh, windowed mode. This is so that I can display timers on top of it. There's a little bit of a problem with getting over it where it didn't allow timers to actually display over the full screen version. Hopefully this will get resolved by, by later updates, but I don't think the game might be getting any updates now soon. So just minimize getting over it for now and go back into OBS. Click on the number one we set, window, and then as we said before, select getting over it, okay and you should be done. If in this case it is a black screen, select getting over it so that it has enough time to refresh and if you minimize it, as you can see, it's now recording. And of course, now you can start recording your runs. So now you've got your video, what now? Well, if the clip shows the entire run including the end screen, then you're totally fine. You can skip to here in the video for the uploading process. If you're still here, you probably want to know what happens in the editing process. I just want to clarify that this won't involve splicing in any way, because that's of course against the rules. This is purely for polishing up your video so that more viewers can understand what's going on. So here's what you do. Okay, for editing, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, I think the editing process isn't as different for all other programs, so if you follow the tutorial by someone else as well, I see no reason why this should be different. But regardless, let's open Premiere Pro. Make a new project, name it something like getting over at uh, speedrun. Then click enter. So the timeline's blank at the moment, you're going to have to find some media to put in here. I usually do this by using the media browser. So once you find your clip, drag it onto the timeline and it should be done. Watch through the clip and figure out where you did your first cut. Okay. So I reset it there, and as you can see, it faded to black. So using the frame keys, find the moment when it went black. So here's the frame right here. Add a little cut here so you can remember where it is, and cut away a little bit of the beginning. Drag this all the way to the left, 
And now, if you press play, you now have a little bit of the beginning, and now you have the new run. So going over to effects, you're going to want to type time code, and drag it onto the clip where it actually shows your run. So now, the video should display a timer when the video starts. But as you can see, 23 seconds have already passed, even though the video has just started. To fix this, go over to your clip, double click on it, go to the effects control, scroll down to time code, and set the media as the clip. So now, if you click play, it should play with the video and everything's all lined up. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this little white dot here, it doesn't look as nice as if you had it without it. So I actually took this off. So now the clip displays a timer when the run starts. For the end part of the video, figure out where your run ended. Looks like it ended right there. There's a little bit of a hang there. So just after the end screen time shows up, make another cut. Select the video where you don't want to have the time code uh, displaying anymore. Click on that and click delete. So now it, the timer goes over onto the end screen and then it goes away showing you your wins and it shows you your time. And that should just about be it. To export time go into the top left, go to export and media. I set the format as H.264 and for the preset I have it as match source and high bitrate. I didn't really mention, but my sequence settings are the same as my clip. 60 frames a second, 1920 by 1080. So now you have your clip, click on this output name, figure out where you want to save it, call it getting over it, followed by your time, put it in the folder where you'll remember, and with that out of the way, click export. It should take a little bit of time, but as you can see, it's only 230 megabytes. And once it exports, you'll have a video of a timer. Okay, so now we're on to the uploading process. I'd recommend YouTube, but if you upload to any other website, I doubt the process is too dissimilar. Open your account, position your mouse over the create video or post button, click on that, then click on the upload video button. Find your clip and drag it onto the area provided. You can of course use the select file button as well. While that begins uploading, go to the title and rename it to somewhere along the lines of getting over it, followed by PB if it's a new personal best, a dash to separate the title, then what time you got. Let's say for example you got 4 minutes and 20 seconds, you would type that here. If you want, you could also add a description as well. And while you're at it, select getting over it as the game you are playing. This is so that if anyone subscribed to getting over it on YouTube, there's a chance that your video might show up in their feed. And of course like I said earlier, set your video as public so that if anyone wants to search your video, they'll most likely find it. Or you can post it as unlisted as well, totally up to you. Just remember not to tick private, because then only you can view the video, which means that any moderator trying to verify wouldn't be able to see. Oh, and always remember to post your recent personal best, even if they're not that great, only because it's quite nice to see someone's progression with the game through the titles of their videos. Click upload and your video should end up on your YouTube channel somewhere. So let's talk about the in-game menu. These are all personal preference of course, but I have noticed that a lot of players use the same settings, so just keep these in mind for when you start speedrunning. For resolution, you're going to want to set it to your monitor's default output, but if you're planning on uploading any runs where you have weird dimensions like say 1920 by 1200 for example, set it down to 1080p so that it matches the width and height of most screens viewed on YouTube. For quality, the best option would be set it to worst. Okay, hear me out. This is only so you'll never get any lag spikes at all on your run, and you can be sure that your game is running at full speed. It reduces quite a lot of lag in areas like Snow Mountain, so this is a setting that you're probably going to want to keep in mind. Like I mentioned earlier, I set the full screen off so that I can display my timers on top of the window. I didn't really explain this as much earlier, but basically when you're in full screen mode, lie split disappears, but when you're in windowed mode, it comes back. There is a workaround for this, but honestly, it's way too much hassle just to play it in window mode instead. Of course you're going to want to have VSync ticked on, but for motion blur, I'd argue that leaving it off is the best option. I'm not aware of it making the game run any faster, but in my opinion, I don't think it looks nearly as nice. I know it can be quite weird to turn it off after having it on so long, trust me, I was there, but you'll soon realise what I mean after your runs start to look a lot cleaner. I like to enable mouse cursor, just so the viewers can get an idea of what my mouse is doing. 
And the last one I'll be talking about is trackpad tuning. The rest are up to you, but I highly recommend leaving this one on. It basically helps you with all the acceleration effects of the hammer. I noticed that after turning it off, which is a really weird experience by the way, I found it really hard to do fast movements, even with my mouse sensitivity set to full. But again, this is just personal preference, and I know quite a few players who actually leave this off, and they can still get really amazing runs. It's fully up to you. And I think that just about ends it. Everything you'll need to know before venturing into the weird world of getting over at speedrunning. Any problems you might be having, remember to comment down below. I'll hopefully be getting to as many as possible. But if there is a question I can't answer, drop a comment on one of the two Discord servers. Oh, and while you're at it, remember to say hi to me as well. I'm always on there, so it'd be great to have a chat about the different parts of the game. But with all that out of the way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.